Hi, in this video we are going to go over the solution of the problem 733, flood fill. Imagine that I have a matrix like this. In this matrix, zero cells are blocked cells that we cannot move over them. And value one cells are the cells that we can move forward and visit them. And the problem statement is saying, imagine there is a source of flood, or for example, a gas leak or something like that, that is... Uh, the location is given to you by SR and SC and we, we can call that source uh, with a new uh, value, for example value 2. If I have that source with value 2 here as a visitor cell and as the set uh, filled with a leakage of the uh, water or gas or anything, something like that, and we want to know what happens to the other cells. For example, if I have uh, that source here, I'm going to, uh, that's going to be a leak to here, a leak to here, to here, here, and go forward, go forward, go forward, and is there any, yeah, forward, and you see this will be the end product of that, so that will be the ending result, so all of these ones turn to zero except this one, because this was blocked by all of these empty cells so there is no way any cells could reach to that and our movements are only horizontal and vertical so there is no diagonal to reach there so in that way uh, we can see what happens to the ending matrix you can also use uh, this term that this is kind of a changing an image to another image when we are changing the color for example we can call this new color uh, you see new color here too if I start that new color here, what happens to all of that color? So this is kind of a different statement of the same thing, but I like more about the uh, uh, water leakage or fluid leakage in a um, kind of a room. So, so I, I like that analogy more. So let's go forward to solve this problem. We are going to use the uh, solution, uh, the data structure uh, BSF. So the first thing we need to do is to import from collections. We say from collections import DQ and I'm going to call this class solution and define the function as float fill that gets couple of inputs get the grid get SR, get SC, we get new color and just for now I'm going to return minus one just to be able to run this function. One instance of this class S1 is solution and I want to get S1 this function. Okay. If I do that, I get minus one. Good. So I have everything in place. Now let's see what we are going to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do, just to be clean, I'm going to call number of rows and number of columns. And that is very simple. If we just get the uh, number of rows with the length of grid and number of columns with the length of the first row of the grid. So. So, so the first thing we do is that I'm going to go and say that grid at SR and SC, the source, we are going to assign that the new color. So you remember we turned that to 2. So that is where we are going to do that. So we have that new color over there. And let me actually uh, um, change our original grid to the correct format okay and first I'm going to change this one to two here and then I'm going to define a queue I'm gonna say that is DQ and Q dot append and inside here I'm going to say SRSC and here I'm going to start uh, start with zero. I uh, talk about that more, but 
this is kind of a timer for us I want to know how long does it take to finish this uh, visits of the cells so I have those things let me just print um, initial Q and let me just print that so you see it, my initial queue is at source 1 1 and at the t uh, time of 0 so that is in my queue now we, I'm going to say while I have anything in the queue go forward and um, pop left uh, the value from the queue and say rcd equals q dot pop left if you want to see what is RC you can print them out I actually have that line of printing here that just prints the variables um, and then I'm going to go and here I have RC and D I'm going to go and search around it so I say for neighboring R and neighboring column in four directions I'm going to search because we said that for each cell we have um, four direction vertical and horizontal we don't have diagonal if you have diagonals we could have four more here so in in my search first I need to check if this uh, what I'm searching is in the bound boundary so I make sure I make sure that an R is in the is in the bar is in the bounding of the matrix and as well as um, my NC and now I'm saying that if that grid is something that it can walk over that if it's an empty space if that grid N R N C equals one all of them if that is correct so I say okay I go forward on that and change the color to new color I say create an R and C equals new color and I add append that to my queue or add that to the queue so we have an R and C and D but here I add one to D because I'm I want to count how many uh, how many seconds does it take to end this um, filling the matrix so I can print the queue I can print what added the queue and at the end what is the queue is and let me print after the four at the end of the for loop I'm going to print the queue okay and for return I'm going to just return the grid and also I return D so let's run this see what we get okay so at the end you can see I got two 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 for first row two two zero zero two two zero one zero two this is what we expect to see because we saw that this cell is blocked with zero so there is no way any leak could reach here so that is correct and this one is our D this is uh, how long does it take to reach to all of these uh, cells let me uh, see another example okay for example if my new color is five let's run it to see what happens there so okay we can change the cells to five and still that cells remain one this is the same thing now let's look if I have source at this location what happens this block location if I have source there two two and run it I get zero because there is no movement or around and nothing changed except that point five so and now let's talk about the time and space complexity time complexity of this problem is order of n n is uh, number of rows times number of columns and 
the reason is that we are going to visit each node once and also space complexity is order of n because we might have a large queue but uh, that queue is not going to be uh, larger than uh, the number of cells in the matrix so in a worst case scenario the space complexity is also order of n so this is the solution of the problem of flood field 733 and we saw that uh, for solving this problem uh, we got the source of the leak uh, of the flood and we first add that to the queue with a timer and then we go forward and uh, we pop left that and we search uh, surrounding cells and every time we hit a cell that we can go forward and it's in the bond bonding box we add that to our queue and at the end uh, we return our grid and uh, how long does it take to uh, fill all of the cells and um, thank you so much for uh, watching this video